yeah, so this should solve some of our problems. There's one last thing for me to carry on. All right. Someone so just sign on the phone. Okay. Alright. Connecting the a bar to up. Should the hand can get your hitting is to two up. Had the chunky sunny cookie is away. Connachaya got to up. The little cheese. The cheese away ye age in me. Ah, right. Thanks, you guys. Any uh, questions before we get started? What did you? What do you find the best time to study, morning or night? I used to do a lot of stuff at night, um, but I'm also walking around just talking to myself all the time. And then the study that I do is I try to just incorporate a whole bunch of new verbs. So like I'll look up some verb, or you know, there's a group of us that are trying to re-update the. The Clinkit dictionary, and uh, and so I'll look up a verb, and then I'll I'll, I'll either be just you know doing research, entering one into the dictionary, or I'll look one up because I needed to use one. Like um, today, I wanted to say uh, uh, what is I tangled it, right? Because I was sending a bunch of paperwork and I messed it all up, so I said. I tangled something up. And then I was thinking too, and, I, and then I'm always looking at verb roots and what they mean. And there's one to untangle something, and it's the same verb to track something. And I thought that was really cool. And so trying to think of how Clinkit always looks at things. Um, but I think what's helpful is to have some kind of regular routine. Um, I know when I was first learning Clinkit, I used to just walk around with flashcards. And every spare moment, I was just drilling myself for the whole. I wrote down every single noun in the orange noun dictionary, which is what we used to study from. And so I, I started with one box, and I had two boxes of these flashcards. And I would just walk around and just go through them and through them and through them. Uh, and, and I think it's a good way, because you can, there's digestible chunks. You can just keep learning nouns. This is the name for that. This is what this is called. This is what that's called. And then gradually start working on some phrases and some other things. And so one of the things we'll start doing next week is incorporating some mock conversations. And we'll practice these mock conversations with each other. And we'll also practice trying to put a little bit of emotion into these conversations. So that, because uh, sometimes when you're learning a language, it's just you do so much, you know, I say this, you repeat, I say this, you repeat that after a while it's just a sort of robotic type of communication. So we'll take a look at some of these things. And, um, I do a lot of translating, because uh, that helps me to see how the language functions, how you move. There's a, For me, there's almost like a four-step process. Like I write down what I'm hearing in Clinkit, and then I'll sort of go through and have a very literal translation so that I'll keep the word order the same for Clinkit, and then I'll have another one where I'll rewrite it in English. So I do quite a bit of that. And then um, and sometimes I'll just go through the phrase book and just look at it and just read all those phrases and just try and sort of figure out ways. Because the, the key is then I'll try to find a situation where I'll use those particular things. Um, and yeah, I've got my kids, so I use all kinds of stuff every day. Translating books and stuff for them is a lot of fun. When you do flashcards, would you write the English translation on it, or just try not to? Do yeah. That? So, so the way I did it, 
is I have English on one side and Hunnic on the other. And nowadays, you know, where it's it is a little bit easier to make something digitally, I would I would put an image on one side. Yeah. But so I walk around, and um, I can't remember how I started. I think I started by looking at the English, then flipping it over, looking at the clan kit, and then saying it. And then I would try to push myself. And after I'd done that for a long time, I would look at the English and try to say it before I flipped it over, see if I can get it right. And then when I had that down pretty well, then I would shuffle them all up because I would I would be memorizing the order of things. So then I would do the same thing. And then when I felt like I had that pretty well down, then I would start with the clinket and I would say the clinket and try to say what it was in English. So that was something I did to to just get a good base of of nouns, and then. Um, Learn phrases and then start to learn to figure out how verbs conjugate. I think we teach Clinket differently now. We, at least I, I teach it differently than, than how I learned it. I try to be a little bit more aggressive on getting into how the language functions now and then to show, you know, hey, look at here's this verb. Hey, here's the root. Here's the classifier. That's going to be a big deal uh, at some point. And then, um, and then teaching it four nights a week that certainly helps, right? Because then. <laughs> We're doing linguistic stuff on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we're doing the stuff that we do in here on Mondays and Wednesdays. And so usually in the linguistics class, we're translating stuff, but we're going over some concepts on this is how you put this type of verb together, this is how you put that type of verb together. So I read this article about it. Uh, if you want to learn a language to practice it before you go to bed, because it'll be in your memory while you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that had helped you in the past. That That's a good idea. Um, I do a lot of my language work at night before yeah. I go to bed. I'm usually doing a whole bunch of language stuff. And then you go to bed kind of thinking about it. Uh, but in she said uh, the ones, she thinks the ones that learned Clinket were the ones who ditched it, or at least you didn't throw out all of your CDs, but I mean, it was a CD era. You know, nobody had CDs on that. Anybody can listen to CDs? You walk around listening to CDs? A CD player skip on you, it makes it real frustrating. You're singing in the car and then it skips, then you feel vulnerable. <laughs> Probably doesn't happen. Um, but you would at least say, okay, well, half the time I'm going to listen to the music that I like to mis listen to, and the other half of the time I'm going to put clink it in there. And whether it's the phrase, you know, there's these phrases now, the phrase CD that you guys have picked up for this class. You just drive around, and listen to it, and uh, and, you, and the part about language learning, I think there has to be this conscious effort. I'm learning this, and then I'm learning this, and then I'm, then there has to be this unconscious effort where the language is just always around you, and then you pick because that's how kids pick up language is it's just always around them, and so sometimes they need to be able to respond or say things, but also it's just around them, so they just know, and these are some things that I've noticed raising children in Clinket is that. They just, you know, I don't even know how they understand some of the things. They just understand it. You know? um, and then there are some words that my daughter doesn't know. And, and lately, she's been trying to get me to say it in English. And I always try to describe it with Clinket. And I feel like successful when I really to do that. Because then she's like, oh, OK. Because then and she'll keep speaking to me in English, but then she'll figure it out. Uh, the other thing is. Uh, ClinketLanguage.com resources audio. Download some of those audio things, and and just keep them on in the background. So what you're doing is you're putting yourself in a situation where there are Clinket speakers around you, even if there aren't. So that uh, even if it's just something in the background, and you're doing dishes, as long as it's like it's not playing in the background and you're watching some movie or something, that's counterproductive. But if you're just doing your day-to-day -day stuff around the house, eating, and that's there. Um, I think it's going to help. And then what you do is you just train yourself to listen to it a little bit more and to continue to listen to what's there. Even if you don't understand the clinket, but I think you start off and you say, I just want to see how many words I can catch. Oh, I think I caught that word. I think I caught that word. And sometimes it helps to have things where you know the translation. So I think I want to put up some, I've got the talk uh, story. I'll put that one up. I think Raven and the Whale is up there. I'll put the handouts next to it so that you can, sometimes it helps to know what's being said as far as the translation of it. That way, when you listen to it, your brain's doing a lot of the background work, this subconscious style of learning, where your brain's putting the pieces together for you. 
I think those things really help. When it, uh, when it comes to music, one of the things that I was just worried about was um, the songs obviously are tribal and each one is on a certain tribe. But if I'm listening to a song and I'm repeating it and learning it, I learn really well audibly like that. Mm -hmm. am, I, am I being disrespectful by learning that song? I don't think so. I mean, if you, if you sort of just, for some reason, sang it publicly, yeah. that would, that's a whole different situation. Okay. But I know uh, there were some of us, too. We got the recordings of Celebration, which are out there, and then convert that to audio and then put that audio on so you can listen to that as well. And those, those types of things, they do help. Because the world, as far as media goes, is just dominated by English. Watch the little puppet shows. Those things are so creepy, but so clink it in their minds. It's just really good. It's really good clink it. Uh, watch those, because then you can see what they're doing, and your brain is going to know what they're talking about. And then just keep watching those, and then you'll catch some useful household phrases through that. Um, there's recordings on YouTube. Uh, I've got some up there, and then there's others of fluent speakers, and some of them have translations. You could just watch those. You could see what people look like when they're speaking Clinkit. And then Alice Taff has a whole mess of them on the UAS website. Um, I think there's 40 or 60 different conversations, and they're all translated there. Speaking of recordings, are there any audio recordings of Thomas Clinkit? Yes. So another good place to go for um, Recordings of Clinkit is the Alaska Native Language Archive. Oh. So it's not the Alaska Native Language Center. Yeah, because I wouldn't have really done that in the company. You're just going to get information there. The Alaska Native Language Archive is going to have a searchable database, which maybe we'll just, let me just throw this stuff up on the screen. We'll just I found a lot of like, tags, but I didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to share my screen here. And those of you online or on the phone, I'll try to explain what I'm doing. So if you go into Google and you say Alaska Native Language Archive, I get to hear it's very small, but I believe it says uaf.edu slash ANLA. So there we are at the Alaska Native Language Archive. Uh, what does this say? Let's make this ridiculously huge. So now you can, uh, there's a selection here for language. You can bring that down to Clinkit. And I think you could just say search, and it might show you like everything they've got. Uh, let me see if that brings up any. I don't know if that'll bring up any. Or maybe in this case, I might, for a word or phrase, maybe I'll say Tongus. Maybe. maybe it wants me to enter something. So what we've got here is then you get search results. This is the Alaska Native Language Archive. If there's a little disk by it, that means there is an electronic version of whatever that is. Sometimes you just have to go in there. Uh, sometimes it'll clearly explain what it is. Uh, sometimes it, it won't. Uh, but this is uh, Frank and Emma Williams. There's quite a few recordings of them. So you can hear uh, some Tonga's Clinkit from here. Um, these are translations of Clinkit verbs. Let me see if I can get. Are you guys still on the phone? Okay. Okay, just want to make sure. Big um, egg and cheese. So we have an interviewer. Let me just see what comes up. Uh, so if we click on one of these, uh, what we get is we get some details about it. It's going to have a description here, pronunciation, uh, transcriptions of Clinket oratory, tell you who the contributors are the sound, and then here's the file. And this is pretty awesome, because you can listen to it here. You can also download it. Uh, sometimes, the way I understand this, 
uh, resource functions is there's like a little robot that grabs a little tape and puts it in a little tape player, and then it, and then you hear it. I don't know. It sounds like it sounds very futuristic to me, but it's actually really old kind of technology. And so, uh, so sometimes you're gonna click on something and it'll take 20 minutes. You know, because, and I may be wrong, but the way it was explained to me is there's only so many listening stations, and if they're all occupied, then you just have to wait. So if we clicked on this, we'll just sort of see. And maybe it's faster, maybe it's changed. Um, but we are probably going to start a project in the near future where we would actually just get copies of these and, and place them locally, either on the UAS website or clinkylanguage.com or something, so we have them. Uh, but it, it, does, it takes a while to load, but then there are ways to download these files as well. And this and there's lots there. You know, there's uh, speakers from Atlin, there's speakers from Ketchikan, there's speakers from different places who are there. Yeah, and so there's a little file down here. Yeah, I know there's a way. Maybe when it was a real window. Maybe I might have used. There's another resource. Uh, I, I use multiple browsers for multiple things. If, if I'm teaching this class, I'm going to use Google Chrome because this is Google Hangouts. It just interfaces with it a little bit better. If I'm looking for content that I'm going to download, um, I'll use Firefox. Uh, on the Firefox browser, there's you can put these add-ons onto the browser itself. And there's an add-on called Download Helper, which is free. And what happens if there's any source that's streaming video or audio, these three little circles will start spinning. And then you can click on those circles, and you can download it. And it's pretty awesome. So there's been times where I've downloaded a video and then extracted the audio, so I would have that audio. Uh, there's been times when I've downloaded source just like this. Um, I don't think when it comes to playing a language, I, I just say go for it. If you're going to just sort of like download the latest music and pirate it, that's your own business. But I certainly wouldn't recommend it. But those tools are, are great for just finding content. Uh, and I was really recommending that to students as well, because mm -hmm. sometimes before I figured out how to, because one of the things I want to do, if you go to clinkitlanguage.com uh, and you go to resources and audio, and I want to keep working on this, uh, this has a button right here to download it, so that there's no, you don't have to find other software to do that. Uh, and then if you click on the play button, then it should go. And there might be some browsers, I'm not, I don't know why, but instead of having this neat looking little interface, I think it'll have the letter P and the letter R and the letter D or something. And D is download. And so, but it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, my preference for those of you learning Clinkit is that you go to this website. I'm trying to make it sort of an online resource for language learners. Uh, click this button down here to register. And you set up a username and it sends you an email, and I think you confirm from that email. Uh, and it's just, you know, I run this website that it shouldn't spam you with anything or like that. Uh, yeah, and it verifies you're a human. It does verify you're a human because I was getting I was getting spammed like 
35,000 registered users on the other one. And I know that they were all fake. There may be a couple that weren't. So, um, so I, try, I think I fixed that. And then there's this forum feature, which I'm hoping we can start using. So if it's the middle of the night, and you have this dying question about clinkets, you can ask it on here. And the benefit of this is that at a future date, somebody might come and see, and they have that same question, and it gets answered right here. And we came up with this idea, because we're doing a lot of back and forth, uh, a couple of colleagues and I just trying to figure out some things, talking about how things work. And then we, we thought, why should this conversation be limited to just us? And the conversation also came about, about correcting people in public and stuff. And, and as when we just said, well, we're all learners. So I don't have a problem with anybody correcting me. Uh, because if they know a better way to say it, then let's just let's figure it out. And let's make that a teaching moment for all of us. So I tried to create some categories up here for things that you can ask questions about. Um, and it's a forum. So here are these broad sort of, you think of them as a book. Like here's the grammar book, and here's the teaching and learning book, and here's the Crunkit culture book. So if you were in here and you said, oh, I got a question about the classifier, then you could click on that, click on that link. And I think, I can't read these, but there's a button that says, you know, add a question or something like that. And so uh, I'd encourage you guys to go in and register and look at it. Uh, there's regular updates as far as if you're in this class and you miss a class, under learning Clinkit, there's beginning Clinkit. And then I'm going to try and stay diligent with this, of updating this so that here's the class, here's generally what we went over, and then you can watch it here in case you missed the class. Or if you want to watch it again, or you know somebody, you say, hey, you should check this thing out. We're doing it in class today. And then uh, the other thing I'm going to work on is for some of this audio, uh, putting the translated files up next to it. Uh, and there's video links for most of these. And there's quite a few. There's a few of these, anyways, that are translated already. And so it would be good to have the version of them. I think I need to correct some of that cricket. Anyways, that's that. Any other questions? Are you OK? Everybody not OK? All right. So our goal is to go, uh, we're just going to go till 7 today. So we're going to power through without a break. Uh, and we're going to try and get through lessons 1 through 3, just run through them real fast. If you have questions, let's go over them. Uh, we'll talk about how some of these verbs are working, a few other things like that. Uh, but I want to get us ready for next week, moving on. I think we'll spend a little bit more time with the weather stuff and look at specifically um, ways to talk about the weather, but maybe more importantly, or as importantly, looking at verbs and what happens when verbs talk about things from that are already happened, things happening right now, things happening in the future. And the most important thing with this is we think of English, and English is a time driven language. And this also seems to be a subject driven language. I would argue those two things. It matters when it happened and it matters who did it. Those are two very important things in English as far as the concept level of how the language functions. Clink it, it's more important about whether the verb has been completed or not. Because there are certain verbs, because we call them perfective. And English would use the term past tense. But they are not the same thing. For example, if I see you, I might say, ich satin. Yake ich satini. It's good to see you. That verb occurs in the perfected form. I have to have already seen you to see you. And that's how I think it works. Chosaku. I know it. I have to know it in order to know it. So there are a number of verbs in Klinket that just work like that. So, and, and this is where some people got confused when they would first start learning about how Clinkit works. Because they'd say, well, how do you say I see you? Ich satin. How do you say I saw you? Ich satin. Right? And so they're, they're the same. But then if you say, how would I say I know? Chosaku. How would you say I knew? Chosaku wun. Which is saying, I knew, but I don't know anymore. Right? 
Because in Clinkit, if you're going to use that in the past tense, it means it must not be in that same state any longer. So we'll, we'll start to think about how the language functions. We'll unpack some things about um, what's going on uh, within the, the verb itself to put it into these different modes and to get us ready for that. We did a little bit of that the other day with uh, I'm going, I will go, I went. We did a little bit of that. Okay, so just shout out if you get questions. We are on page five of the beginning Clink at Workbook. We're going to run through the sound practice very quickly and get ourselves up to lesson one. When we get to lesson one, we'll all take turns just saying the word on our own uh, one at a time. Okay. Very good. Get gay, you winning? Ah. Okay. Wasus. Wasus. Masus. Masus. Cheech. Cheech. Eat. Eat. Da. Da. Glade. Glade. Zate. Zate. Jinwoo. 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 Shlush. Shlush. Ook. Ook. Nusk. Nusk. Seek. 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 Shaw. Shaw. Tia. Tia. Tesu. Tesu. Eek. Eek. Sa. Sa. Satsin. Yak. Yak. So before we turn the page, two people were teasing each other before class started. And say, how did you say you're disgusting? And I, didn't, I don't know about disgusting, but I know the verb. You are trashy. Right? And that means it comes from being garbage. So you could also say, uh, My house is trashy. Right, just, and it's probably metaphorical, but it, would, it could be very real. Like maybe there is garbage all over the place, uh, but that's really what it can be trash. Okay, next page. Hey, Jake. Goosh. Goosh. Oops. Uh -huh. Gooch. Gooch. <laughs> Cast. Cast. In chay. In chay. Husha. Husha. Ark, Ark, Quasha, On Quay, On Quay, Yak, Yak, Quat, Quat, Zisk, Zisk, Quasta, Quasta, Gah, Gah, Quan, Quan, Zeek, Zeek, Coach, Coach. So uh, start here, um, and let me do something real quick.
we need to start transitioning to using more of our Clinkit names and understanding our Clinkit names a little bit better uh, amongst each other. We'll do we'll do some name games maybe next week too. So first thing first, uh, the order that we'll go in is we'll go around this one part of the room, stop, and then we'll go to uh, we'll go to the phone, and then we'll go online. When I look left to right, I see it's like White Horse, Yakutat, Ketchikan. And then we'll come back in the room, and we'll keep going around. So first things first, uh, just say your Clinkit name. Kalkuta. Kika Quinn. And on the phone, who wants to go first? Okay, Todd. Christine, are you still on the phone? Yeah, I still don't do it. Figure out a cool name. So I'm still thinking that. What if we picked uh, an animal for now, maybe? Or do you just, we could just be Christina. You could just be Christina. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just fingish it for now. I was going to suggest that. that it would be K W I S T I N high toned A A. And that, is that everybody on the phone? No one else is on the phone? Okay. And White Horse, who do we have? Yes, Dutch Klaus. Okay. Cheesh, Yakutat. Jan Despa. Okay. And catch a can. Gaster. Okay. Good enough, Cheesh. And then your clinket name? Kadistin. 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 I found it in the yellow bird. Oh, yeah? I need the person changing for the better with the little Oh, awesome. What's that? 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 What's you will say the word, I will say the word, everybody will repeat. Okay. Oh, and it's right. We're going, uh, starting on page 15. We'll just do one noun at a time. We're going to skip over some of the other stuff, uh, but I might come back and explain it. We'll see. We've gone over it before. Okay. At da ye. At da ye. Tas. 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 Shall what? Shall what? Ah. 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 Now we are on the phone. Uh, Tante. <coughs> bottom of page 16 now. Bottom page 16. at the bottom. Te. 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 Christina, top of page 17. <laughs> Do you have the hand up?
Christina? Okay, welcome back. Yet Uchka. Say it. Say it. Say it. Yandeska. Shay. 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 Kashting. Teresa? It's Koha. Welcome back. You only that one? Cut the steam. That's one of the other ones? Uh huh. Take it, Kia. Take it, Kia. Hit. 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 I yelled the tea. I yelled the tea. I love the tea. Keys. 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 Nukshiyan. 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 Good. 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 Tantek. On the top of page 19 now. I didn't hear what you said. Wush ya ye. Wush ya ye. Ye ye or ye. It's totally it. Uh, it could go either way. What did I say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> In between. Wush ya ye. I'll explain. There are certain cases. And this is a relational or possessive suffix. It could be a, totally either way. Uh, <laughs> Christina, still with us? Uchka. Una. 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 Yandiska. Yai. 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 Kastin. Yao. 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 Kajustin. E. E. See you. See you. New. 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 Yuck. 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 So you get this little, this little puff of air that comes out right in the middle. Suck. Name. Suck. Name. A. Tante. Twenty one. Red under South Main. Cheech. 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 Christina. Yes, <laughs> Uchka. Da. 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 Yandesta. Gao. 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 Kastin. Heen. 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 Kadistin. Jenwu. 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 Kakane. Kakane. 
Nusk. Nusk. Sock. 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 E, Danielle. E? It means like gross. My mess up was gross. So, um, uh, what do we have? Tia. 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 Okay. Tantek, top of page 24. Wasus. Wasus. Christina. You try. Yes, Uchta. Ya. Yuck. Yuck. Okay, so everybody uh, turn this off for one second. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, so thinking about senses of space, things really close to us, the things that are kind of close to us, the things that are a little bit of ways away, the things that are far away. So everybody turn, we do gestures like really close, and we start moving our hands further apart. Yeah. 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 Hey. 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 Where? 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 You. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Where? 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 You. You. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Where? 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 You. You. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Where? 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 You. You. Hey. So this is an important concept when we start putting phrases together, which we'll get to how these, how these um, basic sort of small sentences are being put together. Dasaya. Dasaya. Tasaway. Tasaway. Dasaway. Tasaway. Kitaya. Kitaya. Oh, Gusu hit. Gusu hit. Ya do hit. Ya do hit. Gusu yai. Gusu yai. He do yai. He do yai. Gusu jinwu. Gusu jinwu. Wei do jinwu. Wei do jinwu. Gusu dis. Gusu dis. You do dis. You do dis. And then ya. Ya is a question marker, and what does it do to something? It makes it into a yes or no question, right? So when you have get, it's just saying yes or no. So there's always the answer would always be yes or no, and it's one way of forming questions. It could turn any statement into a question. We talk repeatedly in here about the Ron Burgundy effect, so we don't turn the question up at the end like we do in English. <laughs> but instead, we just put get in there. It's automatically a question. It just is. It moves. It tends to come before what's most important. So you could say, Can get it to wasagu? Do you want water? Can it to wasagu get? And the difference that's very slight, but it would be sort of like saying, Do you want water? And what do you want? Water? Right? So it's like saying, one is, do you specifically want this water that I have? And the other one would be like, do you want water or maybe do you want something else? Um, uh, uh, ja ge kwani? Would that work in that sentence if I'm asking if there are people in the wind? Well, in that case, you would want the uh ja kwani to stay together. Stay together. So, but you could say, uh ja kwani kutzitige? Do, do the people of the wind exist? So in that case, you want to, and, and as we start to learn more verbs, putiti is a really good one for something to exist. Um, and then the perfective mode of that is putiti, for something to be born, right? And, and so sometimes it's used, and then the negative form is it doesn't exist, right? So these, 
And these are some things about the way that Clinket looks at things, because and it's a to be verb. Yeyati, to be a certain way. And then we learn Yeh Siti, to be a member of this group. And then Kudziti, to exist. So it's all using the same verb root, but it's starting to add a few more things to make it more dynamic. And it all means to be, but it's like you can have something to be, to be a certain way, to be a member of a group, and to exist. And it's important to sort of think about those things. How That comes from that same verb. And that means like our culture, our way of life, uh, our existence. It, be, it starts to become hard to translate. And some of these bigger forms, when ha gets put on there, it becomes really big. Okay, come around. Oh. oh. You put the tone wherever you want, I don't care. And it's because of that. No tone in ah. Oh. So, then, you know, sometimes it's ah, or ah. Uh. It could be at the end, in the middle, ah. Uh. It could be at the beginning. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard it all, all the <laughs> ones. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that's right. That's right. Ah. Uh. Click. <laughs> Click. Uh, Click. 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 And then when we have a uh, plus ge plus ya, a kya, a kya, a kya. So if I was holding up a bottle of water, I said hina kya, ah hina we. If I held that same bottle of water up, I said kushta a kya, kayak. In a way. So this is, is this, is that. Same thing, like if you see something out there in the water. Right? So it's just basic question and answer things. Finding uses for these phrases is always very helpful. Uh, where did we leave off? Who went last in our naming of the nouns? Ah, I'm going to cheese. Gendis ta e it koaha, top of page 31. You han. Seek. 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 Bastin. Donna. 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 Uh. You want to try that one? Kawoot. Kawoot. This. 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 Kayshish. Kayshish. You guys know what that is in English? It says it. Yeah, it's alder, right? It's beach alder is what they call it, or it's white alders, you know. Um. On. On. Niche. Niche. Geesh. Geesh. Tonkeich, we're on the top of page 33. Yeah. Christina? Gun. Okay, there we go. Gun. 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 Cost. 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 Get this claw. Shayate. And before we leave this page, that word gun means firewood or just wood in general. And you're going to see it used, and it can also in certain cases mean fire, and it can also in certain cases mean smoke and it can also in certain cases mean a little hole on the top of the baby's head, which we call the smoke hole. You know, they get that little soft spot. Fontanelle. Goose <laughs> gun. We took a knee, took a knee, shakik. And it can also. There's a, a related 
term, I think, which means outside. Gone, gone, which can sometimes be contracted to gun. <laughs> they could say, gun get cut for good, which is a euphemism, saying, I'm going to go outside. But it's sort of like saying, I'm going to go over these trees here for a minute, <laughs> which I'm really saying, I'm going to go potty. Don't go over there. <laughs> Stuff is going to be going on. <laughs> Moving right along. These trees for a minute. Okay. <laughs> no reason. Ton. 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 What am I missing? Yane. 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 Ooh. She's the Simshan word for cloud. I just have to continue to reaffirm that so that you can see sea cucumbers floating in the sky. Okay. Gooch. 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 Nadak. 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 Kushta. 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 Dush. 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 On page, we're in the middle of page 35. Kutiya. Kutiya. So something that's kind of neat when you see ku at the front of a Noun, and especially if it tends to be a three-syllable noun, ku has to do with like some kind of cylindrical object. Then you're usually going to have a verb root and then a, ah, the thing, the cylindrical thing that whatever. And this is the cylindrical thing that chisels, although it's the thing that gets chiseled. In this case. Okay, yef tuchka. Kanaist. Kanaist. Yendis Ta Kahak 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 Kastin Shakiak Naat Naat Jaji Jaji. Jaji. They have it in a dictionary with an I, but I've always heard it long. Jaji. The two E's. That's how I say it, even though that's not how I write it. Kajin. 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 Shao. Shao. Shayena. 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 Tan Peh, we're at the bottom of page 37. Away. Are you? Did you find it? Away. Away. Eight to each Tina. 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 Pastin. Ah. Yaka oot. Yaka oot. Or ka yaka ooti. Ka yaka ooti. So we'll talk for a second about this thing on page 39. This is how you start putting questions together. And sometimes they're statements as well. Like you could say, um, das away. Das away. Das away. Dasa what is that? Dasa itu wasagu. Dasa itu wasagu. What do you want? Right. Sometimes there's a T on there. I don't know why. Dot etinech sa iyeti. Dot etinech sa iyeti. Anybody ever hear that one? What is it that you need? Wow. The other thing that you're going to see with these, we call them particles. So you've got this whole, there's this column on the left, da, da, a, wa, and then you've got sa, and then sometimes you might have ya, he, we, or you. 
sometimes things pop up in between the first part and the sub, and sometimes they don't. And it's just something you just sort of learn. I'm sure there's some rules behind it. I don't know the rules particularly. Um, and But you'll note it's just something to pay attention to on how Clinkit starts putting things together. Uh, so the next one would be Da-qa-sa. Da-qa-sa. So if I had these cups up here that were full of different things, I might say, which one of these cups do you want? Or someone might say, hand me those cups. And like there's a bunch of them here, I might say, which one? So the, the difference between this and the, the one before, dasa is what? Right? Dasa, which one from this group? Right? And, and you, sometimes you use it to say, what color do you want it to be? Because you know, there's this limited set of colors. Maybe, maybe you could say, I'm uh, Wasa. 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 It generally means how, but there are certain situations where it kind of means more like what. And it's just how the word, it's how the word how functions in Klingon. So, for example, you could say, um, Wasa iati. Wasa iati. How are you doing? Right? But you can also, if I walked in and all the desks were upside down and stuff was written on the wall, somebody tore all my posters down, I might say, Wasa iati. Which we could translate as, What happened? But the, a more literal translation is sort of like, How did that happen? So sometimes it's, it's just in the way that we would say the same thing in English, yeah, and then we, we get that point. What's that it do with soft? How do how do people call you? Right. But then we don't usually translate it that way. We usually say an English equivalent would be what's your name? Okay. I do sa. I do sa. I do sa. I do sa. Ah sa. Ah sa. Ah sa. Who? Right? right? So, and if if you're asking, because you might say, I do so way, who's that? Right? Or like, this is, here's a bonus of learning how to speak Klinkit. Say you're like me and you forget people's names all the time, and you just might say, You just sort of casually say in Klinkit, I forgot their name. Who is that? Right? Or I do so way, you know, somebody's telling you some story, you know, and then there's this important part. You say I do so way. Who was that? There's cases where you're gonna see a douch so way, and that means there's a verb coming after, and you're saying who did the verb, right? And we'll talk about that later. But that ch is used quite a bit to specify who's doing the verb, and there might be cases where like there's a whole bunch of action going on and the speaker needs to specify who's doing something, in that case, they'll do it. We douched a toot out the shot. The cat grabbed your tongue. Uh, this is one, the next one, goo. It tends to not appear on its own. Like you usually don't hear like goo sa. You usually hear some suffix attached to it. Like you'll hear it instead of goose up, you'll hear goose. 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 Where is it at? Goose. Goose. Where does it reside? Goodachsa. Goodachsa. Where does it come from? Goodesa. Goodesa. Where is it going? So it's very often you're going to hear these suffixes attached to it. And you're really not going to, you know, I don't think you see it very often on its own. Kunsa. 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 Kundana sa way to wasagu. Kundana sa way. How much money do you want? And so this is one where the kun, if you're specifying something, it usually comes in between the kun and the sa. Right? 
khun hatak sabwe awakha kekhanded, right? Main hundred hot dogs. Gwetkin sa. Gwetkin sa. Gwetkin sa. Gwetkin sa. I think in, I gotta put the Yakutat version. I think it's Gutkin sa. Gutkin sa. Gutkin sa. Gutkin sa. This is when in the future. And then Gutk sa. Gutk sa. Gutk sa. When in the past. And we'll look at examples of how to use all of these, but it's just good to know you've got a chart to look them up if you ever encounter them or as you start to want to use them. These things are important in all languages, is to be able to start saying you know, who, what, where, when, why, how, types of things. Dot yissa. Dot yissa. Dot yissa. Dot yissa. And saying what for, but it's almost like who's going to receive it, right? That's usually how this is used, or, or what is, who is that going to benefit? Dot qasa. Dot qasa. And that's for what purpose or going after. You know, so the examples would be if I'm cooking this huge pot of stew. You might say, Dot yes away. you say e. What are you cooking that for? Oh cook cook yes for the cook Right? Um, but if I'm going to the store, that qasa. What are you going to the store for? Kahwe ka. I'm going for coffee. One nachsawe. One nachsawe. One One And that's a good one to just know, because it's just like, why? It's a generic one. One nachsawe ika. Why are you crying? From a reading story. Any questions? Everybody okay? Um. You can't get. Here we go. Twenty five minutes. Where did we leave on? Who went last? I think it was Kash uh -huh. So I'll do this one. Saved. Saved. So we get this thing in clink it where sometimes one word means a bunch of different things. And this is a case. It could be stairs, it could be a ladder, it could be a boardwalk. It has to do with these boards in a row that people walk up. So it seems to be. What if they don't walk on them? I don't know if it would be Zayd. Like, what would it be? A series of boards that people don't walk on? Yeah. Oh, yeah, when they've got them like stacked yeah. like that. Yeah, that would just be Taka or Taya. Huh. Hmm. So speaking of boards and walls and stuff like that, <laughs> ah, everybody say ah, 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 ah. It just means a board. Everybody say ka, 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 ka. That word doesn't exist on its own. It needs something to belong to, right? It means on or the horizontal surface, of, right? Yeah. 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 Same thing. You don't say it on its own. You know, we just say the vertical surface or the face of. So if it's the floor, you say a uh, ka. A ka. A ka. On the board. A uh, ya. Yeah. A uh, ya. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The face of the board. So that's the wall. Right, so this is how, and these are going to pop up all over the place in verbs. You're going to see verbs that have ka in the front and verbs that have ya in the front. The ka has to do with some horizontal surface, the ya has to do with some vertical surface. Okay. Sa. 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 On quay. On quay. Cheat. 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 Cheat.
So there are some communities that don't use this word. They just use isk, which means, and, and, and that's just fine. But there are other communities where tati is like a bird that's kind of, if you close your hand, it's bigger than that. And if you close your hand, it's smaller than that. And if you isk, it's a little bird, big bird. It's not always that. You got this claw. What? 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 Question. This. 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 Who's? 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 Okay. Now we do our pronoun triangles. No. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> and um, so we do these things in sets of three. Right? And we're going to start seeing specifically more and more how they work in verbs. Uh, so the first set is independent pronouns. Uh, so the, the example of when we would use these things. Uh, say we're at home and somebody knocks on the door, and when you knock on the door and click it, you go, oh, oh, oh. That's what a door knock is. And then uh, someone and who's inside the house might say, I do so well. Who's that? Khataya. Maybe. Khataya kune. Maybe they know my voice. I just say, Khataya. I do so well, Khataya. Um, so there's not a whole lot of cases where this is used, <laughs> the independent pronouns, or you, they might say, gusu uh, ikla, then you point, weidu, right? So it's going to be used in the, the weidu or gusu, uh, which is a verbless phrase. The other instances, if you need to specify, like I might point, uh, if we're doing some kind of drill in class, and I would point at someone and say, put away kind of wounds. Ask him. Right? And I'm just specifying. Or I might, if I'm telling some story and it's sort of confusing who's doing stuff, and then I might say, hut away, hut away, it was it was me, it was me. I told them. Right? So it's used to really specify who's doing something or who's somewhere, but it's probably Probably the least used of them all. Um, all right, so we're going to do. So the way we do this is we pick somebody that we're talking to, uh, and if you know, if there's no one next to you. you. Just imagine that there's someone next to you, and you are going to talk to that person. So it's all about eye contact for this drill, because I am me. I'm the first person. I'm number one. The person you are talking to is number two. And you keep talking to that person, and you point to someone because you've got some awesome, juicy gossip. That is person number three. Okay? And this is how it works. So you do not turn to person number three, because when we talk, we don't say me, you, her, and I say her to her. Right? That's just weird. But I would say it to you. Okay. All right. So the first one. I like to point. I have this thing we are doing last semester where I'm pointing with one finger if it's singular, and I'm pointing with two fingers, or one with each hand. I don't know. <laughs> one on each hand, if it's plural. One, two, three. Yeah, so I do one, two, three. Oh, I clink it. I guess I'd go one, 
two. Oh, no. Let's do five. <laughs> Never mind. So usually I'm doing one finger for myself, two fingers for you, three fingers for him or her. The other thing with Planket is the pronouns are not gender specific. So it's he or she, it's them, you know. So this is just something to keep in mind. And we'll look at how these, when we get into the verbs, and we'll, we'll practice these tonight, but when we look at verbs a little bit later, we'll start seeing how they specifically function. OK, so start with ourselves. Uh, everybody repeat after me. <laughs> when the person you're talking to, <laughs> when the person you're gossiping about, <laughs> 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 Okay, so now we'll uh, go around her and just do all three. Just pick somebody and just pretend you're talking to that one person so when we get to hook, you're not shifty. Don't, don't do the shifty eye thing. It's got to be discreet. I know. It could be. It could be talking. <laughs> well, right, well, let's say we're complimenting somebody. Let's just oh. let's go with the gossip. We're complimenting somebody, but we don't want them to get full of themselves. So we're just like, yeah, good night, good night, good day. Why? Okay, okay, okay. On okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's good. 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 Oh. 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 Okay, now we're going to go into toddler mode. <laughs> One of the things that toddlers do love to say is, fine. <laughs> or those little sequels on the Finding Nemo. <laughs> right. This is how they say it. Ach, ah, ye. 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 So there's a word that would translate to something. It's a very powerful word in Klingon. It has two sort of basic forms. One is at. 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 The other one is ah. 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 And so there are cases where you'd say ah ati. That is usually used as a term for like extreme affection. Ach, a D. And then it, this, the tone shifts over because it's like, ach, a D, E. Right? There's this E thing we can say. We, we said E earlier could be yuck, right? E, that's yuck. But a kinship term, especially kids, ach, yeti, E. Oh, that's just, just endearing yourself to that child. Like, Let's say they hurt themselves. Ah, yet the e, right? Ah, a d. That's like some really good clinket flirting, really good clinket expression of love. Uh, and the kinship system is so sacred in clinket. And there's these little things that are really hard to define. But when you say ah, ah, ye, that could mean my thing or my thing. But if I walk this, if we all a bunch of people, half of us left, and Sakwefti Yid left a bunch of stuff here, and I wasn't sure who, so I might say, Adi Sawa, whose stuff is this? And then, you know, or 
if I was using someone's pen. I do ayi sayya. Whose pen is this? So I say ah ayi. So it's just like thing, right? It's just my thing, right? All right. How would you spell it? I Y high toned E A A Y high toned I or high toned double E. It's a possessive suffix. It could be short or long. It's totally up to you. Okay. So we go. Everybody repeat after me. Chet wa eh hu. And then uh, maybe I'll turn the camera off. Then we go, ach, eh, du. Ach, eh, du. Chet, wa, eh, hu. Chet, wa, eh, hu. Ach, eh, du. Ach, eh, du. And if theoretically we did all six of these, Chet, wa, eh, hu. Ach, eh, du. Chet, wa, eh, hu. Ach, eh, du. Chet wa e hu ach e du. Chet wa e hu ach e du. Okay, look. Chet wa e hu ach e du. Chet wa e hu ach e du. Chet wa e hu ach e du. Chet wa e hu ach e du <laughs> 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 What e Okay. Okay. All right. And so again, so we say ah aye. We say ah aye. Ah aye. E aye. E aye. D aye. D aye. By the end of the semester, we're going to learn how to possess nouns, and then we'll we'll practice these using a variety of pronouns and also using a variety of suffix combinations onto nouns. But for now. Not gonna worry about it, and then we're gonna quickly do the subject and objects. But those ones work better when we're actually working in verbs. Uh, we'll do the object first. So the first person is me, and that's chet, chet, and e, 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 nothing, right? <laughs> Zero, right? So you say. Talking to me, talking to you, talking to and that's how it works in Clinkit. We just get used to that. And it, it takes a while to get used to because sometimes people want to put a pronoun there. And they'll put some other pronoun there when they're talking about a third person uh, when there shouldn't be one. The letter A is there because if you have third person subject and third person object, the object will change to the letter A. Right? So you'd say, Khatsechan. He or she loves me. Asechan. He or she loves him or her. And we'll look specifically at how that works, and we'll start practicing that. Um, the loved one, it's a good verb, because we all love each other. Although, shetzechan is not a very good thing. He or she loves him or herself. That's not, not a good thing. It's a good thing, maybe in English, like, oh, you should love yourself. But, you know, it's not something you should take. Right? When we get into subjects, and what's the difference between a subject and an object? I need like a, a clink it 
version of like the Jeopardy theme song. It's like it just like <laughs> the subject is the doer of the verb. Yes, the subject does the verb. Therefore, the object does. Yeah, the verb is done to them. It's generally speaking, how it works. Dog chases cat. Cat chases mouse. Mouse eats cheese. So when the first person subject, ch, 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 second person, eh, 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 third person, nothing, and always, every time, nothing. Okay. I do it, you do it, doesn't. That's just how the grammar works. Okay. Okay. Next. So now we'll do a couple phrases. This is page 49. Uh, I will print one of these for you by next week. And then you can also get it online if you want to. Dasa e jiwu. 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 Okay, so if you guys can just pick a noun for this exercise, whatever noun comes to mind. You don't have to actually have it. We'll just pretend we use our imagination, and I'll ask you each one at a time. And you say the noun, and then ah jiwu. And the way this works in Klinket, this is important. In English, having something is a verb. I have it, I had it, I will have it, when I had it, I used to have it, if I had it. Right? You can conjugate it in all these different ways. And the verb itself doesn't change a whole lot because uh, it's how English works. But in Klingit, it is not a verb. G. Everybody say, ach, G. Ach, G. Ach, G. Ach, G. What do you think that G part is? It's kind of related to hand. Oh, everybody say, oh. I think it has what we call relational bases. Some people call them relational nouns. And what it means is there's some sort of, it has some kind of spatial relationship, right? In English, we often call these prepositions. In, under, around, through, beside, above, below, those types of things. This is one of those things. It has to do with the spatial sense, and it really means my possession. But it, you know, so like I have it. But this doesn't mean it's sort of like it works kind of like in English, right? Because I might say I have a rifle, but it doesn't mean I'm holding it right now. Right? That would be weird. <laughs> it means it's at my house, right? but it, it's in my possession. And in Clinket, it works the same way. So you could, but in certain contexts, um, you know, it's all about context, right? Because if I said dasa ejiwu and you said una achiwu, then and you don't really have it. But for this exercise, the way that we usually answer this question is by holding it in our hands. But it doesn't always have to do that. And it also is used. Um, in a variety of ways, we'll see it used in uh, handling verbs and a number of, of other verbs, this G. And things can be attached to it, suffixes. There's a number of suffixes that talk about where things are, where they're going, where they're coming from, what kinds of things they're doing. And this one is W. Or sometimes it's just U. Uh. And it just means to be located somewhere, right? And it and usually means that there's no verb involved. It's a verbless type of suffix. It's the exact same one you hear in goose. Yad, yad do. Yad do. Hey do. Hey do. Wave do. Wave do. You do. You do. So that oh is saying it's there. For example, if someone said, 
Usu itam. Where's your mother? Might say, Nesha hu. Nesha She's at home. Right? So it's got that uh on it. And it's, it's not used in a whole lot of different ways. These are sort of most of the ways that it's used. Uh, but in this case, so when we say dasa ejibu, what do you have? So this will be the last drill we do, and we'll pick up here on Monday. Uh, we'll start moving through uh, some other stuff to get along with this fun. So just imagine a noun. It could be any noun whatsoever. Dasa ejibu. 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 Dasa Hantech, dasa ejibu. Chayu ahtibu. Kastin, dasa ejibu. Kastin, dasa ejibu. So you can say any noun. You can say te ahtibu. Yeah, we're right down. Right. Any final questions? Goodness, cheese, which I you kind of running a little early tonight. Uh, we're back at it on Monday. Also from Monday, words. Five nouns, two verbs. <laughs> Five nouns, two verbs. Just send them to me through email. That'd be the best way to take care of it. And what we're doing with this is you're building a vocabulary list. Um, let's actually do five nouns. Let's just stick with five nouns, two verbs. That's fine. That's fine. And these are things you are committed to memorizing. We'll spend some time practicing them. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more on Monday about what I specifically expect. But the, the short answer, you'll stand here in front of the universe, and you'll recite these without looking at any notes. So think of things that you want to learn that you're committed to learning. Uh, random doesn't seem to work as well as having some sort of strategy, like a collection of words that have to do with a specific subject or story or something like that. Those are the most successful examples I've seen. Gracias, Chish. Gracias, Chish. Ah.